let's face it, the Oscars in 2019 are a train wreck. We've got a whole bunch of issues with them. We've got the Bohemian Rhapsody issue with Bryant Singer directing it and the accusations against him. We've got the host, Kevin Hart, being cancelled because of homophobic tweets. We've got the fact that the Academy was going to put in a most popular picture Oscar, which they've since cancelled. And they weren't going to show the cinematography and editing awards during the broadcast. All of which it shows that it's a dumpster fire this year. So let's look at the history of the Oscars and go back to the biggest Oscar ripoff of all time, in my opinion. Let's talk about Thelma Ritter. Once upon a time, there was an actor nominated for an Academy Award four years in a row who didn't win one of them. A decade later, the same actor was again nominated twice for an Oscar and didn't get to make a speech or thank the Academy. That actor was Thelma Ritter, and I love her work. The movies for which she was nominated were all about Eve in 1950, The Mating Season 1951, with The Song in My Heart 1952, Pick Up on South Street 1953, Pillow Talk in 1959, and Bird Men of Alcatraz in 1962. She was nominated for three Golden Globe Awards for All About Eve, The Mating Season, and Boeing Boeing. She did get an Emmy Award in 1956 for the Goodyear Television Playhouse production of The Catered Affair. She won a Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a Musical Tony Award for her role as Marthy in New Girl in Town, sharing the win with her co-star Gwen Verdon. But in spite of all of her achievements, Thelma Ritter doesn't have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The other two female actors who share long losing streets, Deborah Carr and Glenn Close, have stars. So does Donald Trump. Ritter was a 100% pure character actor. Sometimes using her strong New York accent, she played for the most part working class women with more common sense and wisdom than the people around her. Often she played mothers and helpers. She represented the legion of women who keep the wheels of the world turning. In All About Eve, she was Bertie, the housekeeper of the insecure theatre diva Margot Channing, played by Betty Davis. Bertie was the only person, apart from George Sanders' saturnine theatre critic Addison DeWitt, who wasn't fooled by the film's title character Eve Harrington, played by Anne Baxter. She saw through her straight away. In Samuel Fuller's film noir Pick Up on South Street, Ritter was Mo Williams a police informant who sells neckties on the street. Mo is world-weary and fatalistic, a woman worn down by her life on the streets. She has a soft spot for Richard Widmark's amoral pickpocket character, Skip McCoy, and when a communist spy played by Richard Kiley finds Mo and tries to get her to tell him where Skip is, she literally defends him to the death. Mo's demise in Pick Up on South Street is the most heartbreaking scene in all of film noir. She played Doris Day's tipsy housekeeper Alma in Pillow Talk, and she's hilarious in that. You can see Rock Hudson's delight and amazement at her artistry. It's kind of in the same way you see Dean Martin's dude react to Walter Brennan's Stumpy in Rio Bravo. In Birdman of Alcatraz, she flipped it. I want to talk to you about her. About Stella? Your association with her will bring you nothing but trouble. And gave us one of the most emotionally ugly characters in her filmography. As Elizabeth Stroud, the mother of the title character Robert Stroud, played by Burt Lancaster, she's as cold as a polar vortex. If you want to see an actor use stillness to great effect, watch Thelma Ritter in Birdman of Alcatraz. She does it brilliantly. She was also very good in the 1963 Doris Day comedy Move Over Darling, She plays the wealthy, upper-class mother of James Garner's character in that movie, and she makes this atypical character for her feel really lived in. Thelma Ritter also did a musical with Fred Astaire, Daddy Longlegs, in 1955. In How the West Was Won, which was an epic Cinerama movie, 
She stole every scene she appeared in as a character called Aggie Clegg, a middle-aged woman looking for a husband on wagon trains heading west across America. She was never ordinary in any movie she made. So, who was Thelma Ritter? She was born in Brooklyn in 1902. She paid her acting dues in summer stock and in radio plays in her youth, then paused to have and raise her children before going back to radio initially. She made her film debut at the age of 45 in Miracle on 34th Street, playing an exasperated mother shopping for Christmas presents. Thelma Ritter was a superb supporting actor. There was none better. In most of her roles, there was compassion and humanity that shone through. You can tell that she was a woman who lived a life before pretending to live one in front of a camera. She worked with a lot of the best directors in the mid-20th century Hollywood. Mitchell Leeson, Alfred Hitchcock, John Huston, John Frankenheimer and Frank Capra. Thelma Ritter was an actor we should remember and admire. She had the talent to fill out the world around the beautiful stars in her movies, and she brought a luminous humanity to most of the roles she played. Her acting comfortably bridges the decades and cultural changes that separate us from her work in the middle of the last century. Her characters are instantly understandable and for the most part relatable. We need to talk about and appreciate actors like Thelma Ritter more than we do, And yes, she does deserve a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and a posthumous Oscar. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.